What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about why I do not think we'll be getting a Miles Morales 2. So I want to talk about the possibility of this game, kind of no matter what, it was on my list of video ideas to do after Spider-Man 2 had come out, and I tried to take an angle in this video. So I'm going to be looking at it from the angle of it not happening, but should it happen? Will it happen? When could it happen if it does? Those are all kind of questions I want to go over in this video. But I want to start with... With, you know, just the again, the opinion of it not happening, but kind of walking you through why I say that. And there's really two parts to this, okay? Number one is I think Miles has been established as a proper Spider Man, okay? And I think Insomniac themselves are kind of handing him the keys to the franchise. Like it or not, you can totally, because I've seen people kind of on both sides of this, right? Don't care what you guys think about it as long as you respect my opinion, I'll respect yours. But regardless of how we feel, it's very apparent that that's the plan going forward, right? You have, and I'm going to be spoiling Spider-Man 2, so obviously turn away now, considering we're talking about things that are going to come after Spider-Man 2. There are going to be spoilers, considering the way they ended the game, right, with Peter. And I do think Peter is coming back, okay, 1,000%. But I think you have a big choice to make now in the third game of killing him off or, you know, retiring him permanently. And we'll talk about that as we get closer and in future videos. But... But going into the third game, I think it's actually more Miles' game than Peter's. Even though Green Goblin might be taking the angle at going after, say, Spider-Man, right, if that's what they do, it might be a little bit more Peter-centric. And, and I would say the story of Spider-Man 2 was Peter-centric. Miles did a lot of the problem-solving, right? He kind of came in, he kind of fixed people, he kind of fixed situations, but a lot of the story really wouldn't have even happened if it wasn't for Peter, right, with, with Venom and Harry and all that stuff. So, I think going into the third game, it's actually more Miles. And, well, why am I spending so much time talking about this? Well, why would Miles... And I actually look at it this way. And this is this maybe is harsh, but I truly don't see it as harsh just because of everything else I've already said. Why should Miles get a second standalone game? Now, hopefully, you guys understand that. But I guess where I'm coming from is you had Spider-Man 1, and that was mainly Peter's game, right? Now, you had Miles in it. And you had MJ in it in terms of playable, okay? But it was Peter's game. You had an entire spin-off, shorter game, yes, but you had an entire game that was just dedicated to Miles. It's one that I, I liked. I, I'm not saying like it was a wrong thing to do. I liked it. I think they did good. It's obviously sold well, all that jazz, okay? You go into the second game, and it's very much split. Again, a lot of the problems are kind of either caused by Peter or because of Peter certain things happen, but it's a very split game in terms of, you know, playing as both. And Miles is equally as important, if not more important in that sense, than Peter because, again, Miles, I think, fixes a lot of things in this game, okay? So now where we're at, and this is where I stand, where we're at now, why should Miles? <laughs> I think that's actually a little unfair because although... Like, yeah, this Peter's been around for a while. This Peter's been Spider-Man for a while. But, like, and yes, you could say, well, Alex, we've played a lot of Spider-Man games with Peter, let's say, not with Miles. That's true, but the Insomniac version, we've played one, and it wasn't even the full thing because you had Miles and MJ. Then you had a Miles game. Then you had a second game that was split. Now you're going to have a Miles Morales 2, and then you're going to have a Spider-Man 3 where Miles is probably the more important of the two characters, or maybe you play it, you know, whatever it might be, right? However they end up uh, doing it. I feel like that's kind of weird, at least to me. That's how I see it. And now the second part of it is timing. And this goes into, okay, well, what about the opposites? I like to give both sides an honest look in these videos, right? All right, say it happens, right? Well, when could it happen, all that jazz? Well, again, looking at it from the more uh, opposing side, right, that it won't happen, I would bring up timing and, like, and I guess the thing would be, when in God's name would they do it? And I think that's a fair question, and I think it's actually an exciting question versus, you know, like a, an angry kind of thing. I think it's exciting, as we've talked about, there's a lot they can do. And, you know, there's people talking about Daredevil at this point with Insomniac, and, and maybe they do something like that. Or, obviously, you have the idea of a Venom spinoff game. But it's like, okay, well, where are they going over the next few years? Well, as we've said a thousand times, right, based off everything we kind of know, it seems like there's something in 2024. And whether that's a game where you might play as all three of them, or maybe you just play as Venom or whatever, you know, that's one thing that you could probably pencil it in. Probably don't pen it in, but pencil it in, okay? Now, after that, you say, all right, well, you know, you have to also, I guess, consider the multiplayer game. Well, if it's not a Venom 
like actual game. Say it's like a small thing, a DLC where Venom's again playable for, in this case, let's say like an hour or two, right? Do you still want a Venom spin-off game? And I think the answer would actually be yes. So here's here's I guess where I'm going with this. I think the future of what they can do, I think you can have a Venom game like how you had Miles. So Miles was really the buffer, the buffer year, buffer whatever, between Spider-Man 1 and 2, okay? That's what they use Miles for. Now, it was for other reasons, but that was that was one of them, okay? So Venom, I think, can be used in a very similar situation. Because, again, uh, you, you can't count Wolverine. Because, you know, you're doing Wolverine, and then that team would do something. You got the multiplayer game. They're busy. They might do something after that. You know, we've talked about, well, what's the future of Ratchet and & Clank and Resistance and Sunset Overdrive or, God forbid, a new IP. And, and you know, we've talked about I, I don't want to come across so, you know, aggressive. But I'd love to see Insomniac do some new stuff as well that I guess isn't uh, licensed in the sense of, say, Marvel, right? So that that's really where I'm at too so i feel like it's it's borderline like un maybe not unfair unfair is maybe the wrong word but it's it's almost unnecessary i think that's maybe the right word i think it's unnecessary to have a miles game considering his his status okay his status in the franchise i don't see why it makes sense to do another one of his games and then you could say well what if you're looking towards a shorter kind of game like a six to eight hour thing we'll do venom do some do a spin-off of, of some kind do something like that I don't think you need to go back now it's always there if you want it to but again I, I I would just circle back I'd actually circle back to my first point it doesn't really make sense to me why you would do something like that because he's equally as important as Peter he was in the second game obviously he was more important than him in his own game in miles right and so that's two times in a row that he's equal or more important. And then going into the third game, he's going to be equal or more important. So do you really need to have a spinoff game with him a second time? I, I don't think so. I, I think it's more of an argument towards do that. By all means, do a six to eight hour game, spinoff game. But do it on something else. Do it on Venom. Do it on some other character. Like whatever you want to do. Do it on that. And, and in terms of like when that would happen... It really, it does revolve around that 2024 thing. Like, that's the big hang-up for me. It's hard to predict this uh, midterm kind of, you know, this thing two, three years down the line that's maybe like a six- to eight-hour adventure game. It's hard to f think about that or fully plan it out when they could somehow, I don't even know how it's possible these wizards can make games so fast like Insomniac does, it's possible that's coming out next year. Or it's just DLC, it's a smaller DLC thing, and you say, okay, well, maybe then you give them two or so years, and then you get maybe a Venom spinoff game, and that's the buffer, just like Miles was, and then you do Spider-Man 3, which would be like three years after that, which would be, as we talked about, say five years from now, 2028, however you want to rationalize it. So there's my thoughts on it, and maybe it's controversial. I really don't think so. I Maybe I should have said this early. I like Miles. <laughs> this is not like an anti-Miles thing at all. I'm just literally looking at it as I don't see the need. But it's not like against Miles and any I actually really like the character of Miles. So let me know what you think. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.